Alright, welcome to this video here. Tonight I will be showing you some of the most optimal and strongest strategies to use and play crafts with. Um, no matter what you hear, um, you can play and bet crafts any way you want, okay? Uh, there's all sorts of ways... There's really no, you're not really limited to just one style. Um, that's the beauty of gambling in this sort of format is you can uh, apply all sorts of formats and styles. Um, but ultimately, you know, your best strategy is by uh, reducing the house advantage uh, as close to 50-50 as you can. So, you know, make sure that you know you play your lowest house advantage so um due to contrary popular belief people believe the pass line bet is not really that great of a bet um but you have to take into consideration the win loss on the come out roll makes up for the disadvantage um when you do get your point on six eight five nine ten four Okay, so it doesn't matter what point you get because they already know how often you're going to be on every single point because it's wired into the math. So everybody freaks out. They're like, oh, I'm stuck on the pass line bet. I'm on a 4 or 10. This bet is useless. It's horrible. They're already getting me, scamming me. Um, but people don't realize, you know, pass line bet, 1.41% house advantage. As opposed to these other bets you're looking at higher house advantage. Why? So this, my whole strategy is playing the 6-8 and pass line with odds. Okay? Very, the most optimal strategy. Some people will find it to be too boring for their liking, their style. And you know what? That's fine if, if that's not your style to, uh, you know, have the best chance that you can on taking that coin flip on getting, because no matter what, when you're playing any of this stuff, you're you're playing at a one-to-one -one ratio and lower. Uh, and not to mention, when that house edge is, is against you, you're getting worse than one-to-one -one on your money. You're, you're never going to get one-to-one. -one. Guess what? If you're getting one-to-one -one on your money, that means you'll always break even. You're never going to be able to just break even. Okay, because that's what house advantage is designed to to make sure it do, that does not happen. So all you can do is basically reduce the amount of money that the casino is going to short you. All the casino does is short your payout because they know the frequency of the occurrence. So they know the value of that payout. So as soon as they know the value of that payout, all they have to do is say, well, guess what? This payout is supposed to be $1. Let's just pay them $0.95. Cents. End the story. That's all there is to it. I don't know why everybody is having such a hard time understanding that and not grasping the concept of, you know, what house advantage. You can't duck around it. You can't jog around it. All you can do is place your most useful lowest house advantage bet in order to have your fairest chance in the story there's there's no other explanation all right um it, other than that when you're dealing with actually picking up a house advantage then you get crossover in the line of changing those ratios those frequency of occurrences that's a different story. We're talking random. When you're dealing with random, it's just what it says. It's random, okay? So when you people are try freaking yourselves out and driving yourselves crazy, trying to fucking play a perfect game and not make one mistake, not take one loss, acting like it even matters... It doesn't matter because in this game, it's designed to just be completely random. And sometimes you're going to fucking hit a winning spree. Sometimes you're going to hit a losing spree. And the way you need to visualize that is, okay, well, if I have 100 sessions that I go to the casino 
and I buy in, let's say, $500. So we got a nice little, you know, chunk of change to, like, you know, work with and visualize. Out of those 100 sessions, you're buying in 500 bucks. All gambling is designed to do is, well, guess what? Out of those 50 of those sessions, they're going to, 50 of those sessions are going to be bad. So you're going to have the, the lows and the really lows, all right? And then it's just always going to have all that whole variance where you go to, you know, your, your least, your most unprofitable session, which is at the very bottom, and then your unprofitable session that wasn't really that bad. But you're always going to have a ranking out of that 50. So starting from 1 through 50, it always goes from worst to the most worst. Same with the, your best session to your your greatest session is going to be one through 51 through 100 or one through 50 you're gonna it's just the way it works and then that house edge is designed to come in like i say if you're dealing with that one percent two percent three percent four percent five percent that's where you're that's where you're gonna experience problems and you're not going to fucking be able to win like you you want to. And that's if you're playing random. Because it's, dude, it's just random. Random always equals random. People don't understand that. People don't want to understand that. That's why it's up for, it's up to people like me who understand the whole concept of uh, basically variance and random to you know show people this it, the same with the coin flip it, it's the same thing the only thing about craps is they scaled the coin flip up instead of having one out of two sides there's one out of 36 why are you people getting so confused on a simple coin flip well guess what if you flip a coin it's expected to land on heads 50 times per 100 it's expected to flip on tails 50 times per 100 in the story what don't you people get about that's just the way mathematics work 50 50 when you start scaling it up it's the same thing it just looks way different and you people are getting so confused and you don't understand and then you the worst part about it is you people think you understand and you're trying to teach people and you're trying to tell people all this shit and it's not true it doesn't make sense okay first of all when you're dealing with house advantage you will it's always going to be there all right all you can do is stay out of the line of fire as far basically just like at a campfire what do they say hey kind of back up away from the campfire because you don't want to get too close but in this situation you, it's your duty to be staying as far back from the campfire as you, as you can because this is not your ordinary fire so let me just show you so first of all this strategy is only being revealed and showed to everybody if you want to take on some of your lowest chances of risking your house advantage over to the casino this, so this is just going to show like I said if you wanted me to show you the very best it would be very simple it'd be a minimum bet with max odds but we have a little bit of room to work with since we're we're gonna have to revolve around on playing on our six eight, since it offers us such a large portion of the game, and we and we don't just want to stick with the pass line with max odds. Okay, honestly, if if you want your very best bet, that's what you do. You put minimum pass line max odds. That's all you can do, and that's your very best bet. And that's if you're looking for like to flip a coin on like oh am I gonna win or lose and and you know what you and you have to be willing to like take it as a coin flip hey if I win I'm putting this on my pocket I'm done if I lose I lose I'm walking away not a big deal that's where you're getting your best value bang for your buck but I'm creating another strategy that's close to as powerful and as useful but it's going to, you know, spice things up so, you know, you're not just sitting there waiting for a pass line to hit, which could take a long time. 
So, you know, this strategy is optimal for, you know, an overall very strong bet. It's not the best bet, but, you know, it's one of the strongest bets. And, and you know what? I'm, a lot of people, they want to hedge their bet, protect their bet. It's time to get away from that. That's a different type of system when you guys are doing that. If, if you're a skilled player, that's a different story. But when you're dealing with random, you, you don't want to protect your random bets with hedge bets and shit. Because you're just creating more house advantage for them to short you. They're shorting you money when they give you that money when you win. You don't take that money. That's how they get you. It's like, oh, will you take this money? Because guess what? If it's a trick. If you take that money, if you take that bet, you're shorting your payout. Because they know the frequency of occurrence. Same with a coin flip. They know, okay, well, it's 50-50. It's expected to happen 50-50. I'll pay it one-to-one. -one. Guess what? They know that it's expected to happen 50-50. They know that it's expected to have to pay one-to-one. -one. They know that... All right, well, if you take this bet, I'm going to, instead of paying you one-to-one, -one, or if you bet $100, instead of paying you $100 fairly, one-to-one, -one, they know, okay, well, I'll pay you 95 And you people accept that. You're willing to take that loss, and you ignore that, and you don't care that you're being short. Well, guess what? That's where you lose. You lose. You lost. As soon as you don't care that they're shorting your payout and you're feeding their fire, you're feeding their fire. Get it through your head. When you're taking that win with that house advantage, you're feeding their fire. You're shorting your payout. You're betting a hundred. You have to simulate. Hey, I bet a hundred dollars at one to one, but I only won back ninety five dollars. Get it through your brain. That's all that keeps happening on all these different ways to place these bets. It's all the same thing. They're short. And they know the frequency of occurrence. When you know the frequency of occurrence, you know the value it's supposed to pay out. They know the value these bets are supposed to pay out. And guess what? When they look at every single bet, as far as when they're going to pay you out, they're going to say, well, guess what? Instead of paying you one-to-one, one, $100, I'm paying you 95 and you people don't care. You people don't get it through your brain. That's what they're doing. They know it's supposed to pay you $100. They know that they're only paying you 95 and that you don't understand that. That you're too ignorant to go learn what they're doing because you're not paying attention. You're not learning from people that are teaching you this shit. I'm teaching you this shit because I want people to save money, make money, and have a good time with a game that you can actually have a decently fair chance of flipping a coin of a win or a loss and not shorting yourself. So you need to understand, don't let them short your payout, okay? Don't do it. Stop doing that. Why are you letting them short your payout? If you know this bet is one to one, and they know the one-to-one -one ratio of what it's supposed to pay. And you already know that every single one of these payouts that they're going to try to offer you is being shorted. Right? You know that. You know that they're shorting you. That's how they make money. They know that you're supposed to win $7.50, but okay, I'm just paying you $7. Guess what? Every time you're supposed to win $7.50 on a 5 or 9 at 50-50 true odds, and you only take $7, you just gave them $0.50. Cents. And when you do that 10 times, you gave them $5. And when you do that 100 times, you gave them $50. They'll do that all day. Because you are just going to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. Because you don't understand. You don't listen. You're not paying attention. You're not realizing what they're doing. Do you understand? If you bet a 5 or 9, it's supposed to pay you back $7.50 at a 1 to 1 ratio when you're betting five. If I bet five dollars on five or nine, it is expected to need to pay out seven dollars and fifty cents. Get it through your brain. 
If you don't care that they keep 50 cents out of that $7.50 they're expected to pay you, kiss your money goodbye and just keep giving it away. Keep giving it away. They don't care. They're going to sit there and send in the next dealer to keep taking your money because you are being ignorant. You're pretending like it's not happening. Well, guess what? It's happening, and it's not going to just disappear. That's the way it is. You're taking a coin flip at one-to-one -one where you're betting $100, and instead of receiving your hundred dollars they're giving you ninety five dollars and you don't care because you're not listening to people like me trying to tell you that they didn't pay you everything that was expected to be worth that value how do you think they keep those casinos in business the roof over their head they know the value and they keep your profit when you win so when you win they win why do you think the casino never loses is because when you win, they you're tipping them. If you bet a five or nine and you bet five dollars, all right. Well, guess what? When you're betting five dollars and when you pay when they pay you seven dollars, you tip them fifty cents. All right. Well, guess what? If you keep tipping them fifty cents, fifty cents, fifty cents, fifty cents, fifty cents, fifty cents. You're, it's going to add up. You're going to lose money. Same with the 4 or 10. If you bet $5 on a 4 or 10, it's expected to need to pay back $10 to be a 50-50, 1 to 1 bet. Don't you people understand that? That means every time they pay you $9, you're tipping them $1. You tip the casino $1. Get it through your head. You're tipping the casino every time that you are willing to play their game. If you're willing to let them short your payout and pay you with your money, they're paying you with your money because you're tipping them. You just tip them $1 every time you win on a 4 or 10. That's a lot. Think about it. You're betting $5.00. And they're getting one dollar. They're getting twenty percent of your freaking bet wager. You just tip them twenty percent of your bet wager. And you people ignore that. And you people don't think it matters. You that's your problem. You don't think it matters. Oh, I tip them twenty percent of my bet, and you don't think that's gonna suck you under the ground and bust your bankroll? Are you people not understanding the whole concept of, hey, if you bet $100 you, at one-to-one, -one, you should receive $100. No, you guys forgot that deal a long time ago as soon as Johnny figured out how to screw you all over and that no one could figure it out and understand what they were doing so that they would just sit back and still just keep fishing, fishing, fishing for as many people who didn't realize what was happening and what's going on. It's time for the generation to wake up, get some brains, and stop blowing your money. You're blowing your own money in the story because if you are playing and then they pay you out on a 4 or 10 a hundred times, as soon as they pay your five dollar 4 or 10 a hundred times, you gave them a hundred dollars. Why don't you people understand that? So you, all that means is if I, you need to start counting how many times you're giving your money to them. Because guess what? When you win on a 4 or 10, you need to be counting how many times you win. Because that, that's part of your losses. When you're winning, you're losing. You, you need to keep count of what are you losing? What are you losing? Well, guess what? As soon as you bet a 4 or 10, every time you win, that's when you lose. That's when you lose. When you lose, don't count that. That don't matter. When you really lose is when you're tipping them, you're winning. You're tipping them where it would be fair for you to, to take the whole bet. Okay, so that's all you need to keep track of is tell yourself, okay, I won 
let's say that you won 100 times between the 4 and 10, and you're keeping track of that mentally in your head. Now that's where you tell yourself, okay, do I want to keep giving them more money? I just gave them $100. That's what you did. You didn't realize it because they didn't, they didn't teach you. Why would they try to teach you when you're giving them $100 if that's how they keep their roof over their head? That's how they make their money. That's how they put those promotions in your pocket. That, oh, yeah, you just gave them $100. Okay, well, we'll give you $5 promotion. Okay, well, they got 100 but they just gave you 5 And now all of a sudden you're happy about that? You're happy that they just gave you $5 in promotion, but yet you just gave them $100 in cash. Are you people not paying attention? Are you people not realizing how these people are making their money? Do you not understand and believe the truth of how random works? Well, guess what? When they short your payout, that's going straight to the piggy bank. That's going straight to their pocket. That's feeling more and more of these casinos to make new casinos because you keep oh here's a dollar 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 but guess what that's just five dollars imagine those people betting a hundred dollars okay now you're dealing with twenty times that amount instead of just giving them one dollar you just tip them twenty dollars oh here's twenty dollars can you imagine tipping them twenty dollars a hundred times what is that Two thousand. Oh, so yeah, and you wonder where all your money went. You just tipped them. You gave them two thousand dollars, and you're wondering why you're down twenty thousand dollars. Why you're down fifty thousand dollars when you when you're expected to have given away two grand in barely fucking four hours, six hours, and you're wondering where your money's going. You don't. You oh, I don't know where my money went. But yet, it's right here. It's right. It's right in front of you. It's happening over and over. It's happening endlessly. Now let's get back to playing some good optimal strategy. Like I say, if anybody wants to get all crazy technical, everybody knows pass line minimum max odds is your very lowest house advantage bet out there. I don't care what anybody says, and that's when you're dealing with an expected random roll. All right, it's not rocket science, okay? Because what happens if I do minimum pass line with max odds? When they, when I'm betting a hundred dollars at one to one, they're gonna pay me a hundred dollars at one to one. Therefore, I'm no longer being shorted on my payout. Now you people realize the golden rule: if you want to stop losing your money, as far as House Edge, stop taking House Edge bets. Guess what? Every single game offers you the, the menu. It'll show you the House Edge. Stay away. That was the very first thing I even learned because I looked up, well, how, what's the best way to gamble? You know, and they say low house advantage. Play low, low house advantage. So your biggest thing that you need to go look at is go look at the house advantage for every single one of these bets. And you stay away from everything that has a high house advantage. Okay, especially anything over 1.5% or 2% and higher. Anything that's over 1.5% to 2% house advantage or higher, stay away from it. Don't bet it. It's not worth it. They're shorting your payout. That's all that means. So when you're just willing to ignore that and not care, well then, guess what? Blame yourself when you're sitting there mad that you're short one thousand dollars out of your wallet. Oh, I'm out ten grand. Well, you shouldn't be not doing research, realizing what is house advantage. What am I expected to be able to fucking manage? Guess what? Let me show you. I'm gonna show you. It's not rocket science. First and foremost, for someone who's never played craps, I'm not going to go teach you the game because that's on your own time. Anybody can go learn this game. All I'm going to tell you is, for a brand new player, is um, what we're going to do. Actually, what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you the very best way to play craps.
as far as variants, don't there there are variants. There that is part of the beauty of the beast. Okay, that's what makes gambling so attractive. Is oh Johnny over here who says to go play the fucking field all of a sudden wins ten field bets in a row, and now Johnny thinks he's the fucking smartest goddamn fucking gambler in the world just because he won ten times in the fucking field in a row. Okay, f stop revolving. That's called fucking um, being results-oriented. Stop being so results-oriented, all right? None of these damn bets are in your favor, so first of all, don't go celebrating uh, in the wrong manner. Yeah, that's great. If, if that's part of your strategy, if I wanted to play the field, if I win in the field, I'm going to celebrate that as a win, but I'm going to be playing the field a lot more cautiously and differently than some person who doesn't understand house advantage getting eaten alive in the field, putting all their money over and over in the field. Guess what? If I'm going to go play a field bet, I'm only going to play a field bet once in a blue moon and it's probably only going to be for like $5. So I'm going to maybe play a $5 field bet once a year. While you got Johnny over there playing the field bet at $50 every freaking 10 seconds the dice are rolled. Alright, there's a big difference between me only putting $5 in the field once a year than when this guy's putting $50 in the field every 10 seconds every roll. That's a big difference. So it's a matter of knowing, well, what's my limit? How much am I willing to drive and press a bet that's not worth it? Why do you think, uh, for me, someone like me, I might play a field bet of $5 once a year. Because why am I going to go try to press that knowing that they're going to short my payout? When, I'm, when they're paying me, when I'm betting $100 at one to one, they're, that, that they're going to go short me, paying me 95 Why the hell would I want that? Knowing that when I win, I lose. That's ignorant. That's stupid. That's being ignorant. Now, it's a matter of accepting the reality of that's the design of gambling. It's supposed to be shorted. So now it's my choice of, well, where are they going to short me the least to where it isn't going to bother me so much to where I know that, th that it's just going to totally pulverize and dominate my fucking chances. Now we get into optimal strategy to where you're actually getting it as close to 50-50. Basically, when I bet $100 at 1 to 1, I need you to pay me $99.50. Otherwise, I, I won't do it. That's what you got to come down to the conclusion and telling yourself. It's like, guess what? If you're not paying me $99.50 per that 100 at 1 to 1, I, I can't. It's not worth it. I'm not going to tip you guys more than that. I'm not going to go tipping you $5, $20, $50, $100 for something that, that isn't worth it. All right. You know what? Fine. If, if you guys want me to tip 50 cents and I win $95 or $99 and 50 cents, I'll tip 50 cents. Not such a big deal, right? Because you're reducing that shorting of the payout and you're, you're even wanting to get it lower than that. You know what? You're going to be like, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to take a ninety-nine dollars and fifty cent payout. You know what? If you give me a ninety-nine dollar and seventy-five cent payout per one hundred at one to one, fine. I'll play. That's where. That's all you can do, and that's what this is. This is where it begins. So your most optimal strategy. We're gonna roll minimum. Boom. What is the max? Three. That's it. That's all you can do. That is it. There's nothing else. Uh, you can do more come bets and take on max odds. Yeah. You could do a come bet every roll if you wanted and take max odds. How do you, where's don't come odds? Um, don't come. Here are the eight. Okay. So $5. So you're just playing max odds and then you're doing it. That's it. That's literally your only, if you want to just wait two rolls, wait five rolls, that's up to you. That's fine. That don't matter. It's just a matter of what, however you want to do it. That's fine. 
Max odds min pass is the only way to take your that's the only way that they're going to um you're going to prevent them from shorting your payout over and over is taking the lowest house. This is just basically taking lo the lowest house advantage you can possibly get. So there's no right way, there's no wrong way. It's just a matter of being Vincent Van Gogh. Maybe you want to wait two rolls, then throw out another comeback. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. See? In this type of situation, you're always getting the best value because when you're going through the comeback, you're getting that one and a half percent house advantage as opposed to if I just put the 10, you got a 50% house advantage. Because if I bet a dollar, they pay me a dollar on a 10 to 4, but it's supposed to pay two. 50% house advantage. Why would I take a 50% house advantage? Whereas opposed to if I go through the come, it takes that, if it goes to the 10 or 4, it's only at 1.5% house edge at 1 to 1. People don't understand that. That's the importance of going through the comeback is because when you get the, that chance to win on 7 or 11, it makes up for that disadvantage of when you're getting that 1 to 1 on a 4 or 10 where you're, oh, I got a 50% house edge against me. Well, guess what? If you don't want a 50% house, house edge against you, Make sure your bet is going through the come when it goes to the 10 or 4 because then you get grandfathered in behind with that chance of winning on that yo 11 in E7. And people don't realize how beneficial that is in your favor to get those odds back to win on that 7-11. And people, they, they, they don't realize, oh, well, that's when I win on 7-11, that's the reason that when I go to 10 or 4, that it does, it's still 1.41% uh, house edge because it, it's on the pass line, it's through the comeback. So guess what? It's not the same thing if you just put a dollar on the 10. How is it the same thing if I put a dollar on the 4 here and then I take three odds, right? If I, if I just put the 10 here for a dollar with three odds, it's not the same is if it can't, if I have a, a come bet that went to the four with three odds. Why? Because if I put a bet, I'm now getting a 50% house advantage on that dollar. So I'm losing 50 cents. As opposed to on this bet. So in this bet, I'm expected, if I put a dollar on a 10, I'm expected to lose 50 cents, 50%. Because it's, it's one to one on that dollar, all right? So you're losing 50 cents. But this bet, this dollar is on the, the four at one dollar, but it's not losing 50 cents. Do you know why? Because it doesn't always go to the four or ten. People forget that. They just think that all of a sudden it's on four or ten, that it always just goes to the four or ten. Well, that's not the way it works. If you're going through the come bet, it's not always going to land on the, the four. So you're getting value on the times it lands on six, eight, five, and nine. And then also when it lands on that four, because there are times it lands on better odds. So it all gets tied together at different values. What value are you getting that dollar? 1.41%. There's a big difference. So this dollar has 1.41% house advantage. Listen. Listen carefully. The combat that travels to the four, that dollar has 1.41% house edge advantage against it. So on that one dollar, now you're only shorting yourself 1.41. That would be one and a half cents. That's a big, big difference as opposed to this is being a uh, 4 or 10 over here is being shorted 50 cents, 50% 50 because if I bet a dollar, if I put that for a dollar, I'm only getting one to one. You're not getting that value back on a 7 or 11. It doesn't matter that the 2-3-12 lose. Who gives a fuck? Because the 7-11 still carry over that. 
Who the fuck gives a shit when it loses 2 3 12? Because that 7 Eleven carry is over that. That's what gives you that 1.41% house edge as opposed to 50%. People don't understand that. They're like, well, I'll just put it. That's stupid. Unless you can take a large amount of odds to deduce and make it worth your while. So anyway, I'm going to keep showing you the, the very best bet you can you can do and then there's no other strategy besides just getting lucky you know sometimes you win sometimes you lose it's a coin flip so same thing boom it's it's all see it notice ah oh, great I have a two dollar combat who cares I'm gonna take max odds because I, I accidentally did that but oh well Boom, same bet. You just same that's all you can do to to lower your house advantage as low as possible. Um people like the whole theory of oh well I like being in control of where my bets are going as opposed to like come bet if it travels to the ten. I could have already just hit the ten. Well that's just taking up a whole new religion. On your own, your own time. You're, you're super. You're feeling your own superstitions when you're coming up with all these strategies that you're not understanding the mathematical. Do you look at how much money is already? I'm already up, and I'm not. I have. I'm not putting zero thought into my technique, and that's because all I can do is rely on playing the bet where my payout won't be shorted. Cause that's all it's a matter of it's when I when I play those place bets anytime I win I lose because they're short my payout so when you're sitting there celebrating you're celebrating way too early because they're already short in your payout so at least here they're not short in my payout when I when I'm winning they're not short my payout hardly anything they're short my payout that one one and a half cents on a four dollar bet there one and a half cents on a six dollar bet there one and a half cents on a five dollar bet now what what don't you people understand it's not rocket science it, it's it really is not rocket science I could take all my bets down right now because the seven's gonna roll because I'm just a random player and I just know I just like to be superstitious see I didn't have to take my bets down but I know that a seven's gonna roll Watch seven. We'll do max combat. See, I would have been killing it. Cause I boom, seven. I already called that. And that's up to you. If you want to take your bets down, who gives a shit? You know the seven's gonna roll. Take it down. Not a big deal. Now I'm gonna show you the ultimate strategy. We're gonna reset the bankroll because we're not relying on uh, something being a good session or a bad session. We're just showing you, you know, the optimal strategy. It doesn't matter when you win. It doesn't matter when you lose. Because guess what? When you win, that don't matter when you win. They're short in your payout. You done lost when you won. So why are you people so, why do you people give a shit when you guys win when, when you lost? Because they already shorted your payout. So let me show you some good optimal strategy. Let's see what happens. Um, it's a it's a real coin flip. Fifty percent of the time I do this, it's gonna win some money. Fifty percent of the time I do this, it's gonna it's gonna lose. But at least when I win, I'm not short in my payout, and that's all that matters. Is you need to make sure when you win, make sure they aren't shorting your payout. End of story. So here's how I'm gonna tell you what they're gonna short my payout on a five dollar bet. They're only winning about one and a half cents times five. So that's about seven and a half cents. All right. So when they pay me five dollars, I'm only tipping them seven and a half cents, as opposed as opposed to some of you crazy people, you're tipping them fucking on a five dollar bet. Let's say, oh god, a sixteen percent house advantage. Jesus Christ, sixteen and a half, sixteen point six six cents times five. Oh my god, you're already tipping them eighty six cents. You're tipping them 86 cents every time you win, but I only tip them seven and a half cents.
and you guys are wondering why I'm getting a better value and better bet and that's just on five dollars so if you go and do that on on ten dollars so this is let's say my average bet is gonna be fifty dollars all right on a fifty dollar bet I'm only still losing seven and a half cents because when I put that money on the odds that money doesn't they're not short my payout they're not keeping my money they're not fucking me over so on a fifty dollar bet I'm only losing seven and a half cents as opposed to you're losing eighty six cents per five dollars on a field bet or a big six or big eight you're losing eighty six point six six cents on per five dollars on a big six or eight which people do that they don't give a fuck they don't realize it and then imagine if they're doing fifty dollars okay well eighty six point six 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 cents times ten now you're tipping them eight dollars and sixty six cents every time on your fifty dollar bet but i'm only tipping them seven and a half cents and you people are wondering where your money just went well, why, how did my money just disappear when i'm only tipping seven and a half cents on a fifty dollar bet but you're tipping eight dollars and sixty six cents on a fifty dollar bet get through your brain you you're you're it's suicide to take these high house advantage bets and pretend like it's not gonna hurt you now you can see how when i show you this strategy the money's going to go back and forth, back and forth, and, and it's just going to almost stay. You're not going to experience such drastic losses because your money isn't leaking out so badly. Let me show you how to do it. We're going to say a $5 pass line bet because it's a very typical bet at a casino to have a pass line at a $5 minimum. So you're going to have to get over that. You know, that's just the minimum. Okay, so we got a 5 we're just gonna play maximum odds with um or no 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 we're not gonna play max odds if you have enough money do max odds that's fine um because the higher your bet because look this is this is what's happening if i take a ten dollar bet now i have a fifteen dollar bet to where if i win i only tip them seven and a half cents so the more i bet the better because now I have a $25 bet and when I win I always tip them seven and a half cents so ideally you want to be able to just keep extending that seven and a half cent tip as far as you can take it now ideally we're, we're dealing with people that are you know bankroll billers who don't really have much money and we're just trying to win a quick hundred bucks or a quick thousand bucks this is how you gotta do it you're gonna say okay well I'll take uh, let's say eight dollar odds and then you always want to start with this twelve dollar six and eight now on a twelve dollar six and eight you're losing remember you're losing about one and a half percent house advantage on that every time you win so Twelve dollars at one and a half percent. You go twelve times one and a half percent. Which is eighteen cents. Um so now you're dealing with okay, when I win here, I'm tipping out eighteen cents. Not that bad as opposed to tipping out eighty-six cents and eight dollars, right? not so bad so I'm tipping out 18 cents so 36 cents between both but that's only one at a time so every time that hits that so basically every six dollars you're gonna be tipping out nine cents okay so we could we've already established I can afford that that's part of my bankroll so basically what that means is you're saying when I win a hundred times between the six and eight between both it doesn't matter you gave away 18 cents so as soon as I win a hundred times on a twelve dollar six and eight that would be point one eight times a hundred you lost eighteen dollars you gave away eighteen dollars so as you can see a normal person we can afford twenty bucks 
uh, on something that's going to take a whole day of play. Oh, okay, so you're telling me it's only going to cost me 20 bucks to go play all day, as opposed to it's going to cost me $1,000. Where What are you more attracted to, losing $18 in a day's session or losing $1,000 in a day's session? That's why it's up to you to stick to these low houses. Because if you start playing your place bet 5 and 9, you're, you're shorting yourself. Why would I even play the 5 or 9 place bet when they're shorting my payout so much? What is it? 4%? 6%? Is that crazy or what? Do I really want to give away that much money? Why would I need to do that when I can just play 6, 8 pass line max odds? And now look, I'm getting a $37 bet. And I'm potentially only going to be losing seven and a half cents if my five wins. So that's your main bet, making getting you your best value. And then you have your six and eight, because remember, even when you have a house advantage against you, you can still potentially win and make money. That's the beauty of gambling. That's why people gamble. So now I'm only losing eighteen cents every time I win on six or eight. And I'm and remember, you don't want the game to be so boring. So the whole point of taking on a six or um, well, why wouldn't you uh, take a a put bet with odds because you're not gonna get better than one and a half percent. In the story, I'm not going into the math. Go pull a calculator out, do some research. Jeez, don't don't tell me numbers when you're not running numbers when you don't know numbers. All right. When I run numbers and I know numbers, and it's very simple mathematical science, don't come trying to argue against this being one of your most useful and powerful and most potential bets to go play. I don't care what nobody says. Yeah, I already showed you the way to make it that more profitable. Yeah, going through the comeback. But this is a little more exciting, and at least, you know, as a gambler, we're that type of person. We're, we're okay with losing a little bit of money, sacrificing a little bit of money. But you know what? I don't, I'm don't. i not going to go sacrificing, oh, I'll take a $95 payout when it's supposed to pay me $100. No, you're telling them, okay, well, well you know what? I'll take a $99.75, $99.75 per $100 on a $100 one-to-one -one bet. And now, 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 you guys aren't basically short my payout enough for me to really care. But you know what? When you're short my payout $5 every time, $5, $5, it's costing me too much money. That's not fun for me because I don't want to just keep letting you keep $5 that belongs to me. Okay? So you're cool. Now all of a sudden you're cool with them. Okay, fine. Don't keep $5. Just keep $0.25. Cents, and I don't care anymore. That's what this is about. That's what this does. Is it, you're telling them, fine, keep twenty five cents. Don't keep my whole five dollars. That's all I'm showing you. Now let's sh let's see the strategy in play. Now if it wins, don't freak out. If it loses, don't freak out. We're we're gonna do this to just see how it kind of just goes back and forth. It goes back and forth. Now watch what I do. This strategy, all you do is every time you make a point, you start pressing one unit. So every one unit is between uh, three to five dollars. So you're going to be pressing three to five dollars every time your point wins. So on your first point, you start at eight. So if you make your first point, now you press one unit. You're going to press your bet up five, three to five bucks. So basically, if this was the second time that I, I was going to be making a point and I was on this point, I would go up to maybe ten dollars on my odds or maybe twelve dollars the point is is you're pressing one unit every time you win okay and that just means you're pressing a small amount of your winnings every time so every time so what I'm gonna do every time I hit a six or eight with a tw starting at twelve dollars I'm going to press one unit. I'll press $6, press $6, press $6. And it don't matter when it loses, fine. I just restart, starts all over. Same with your pass line. I will press one unit, one unit, one unit. 
every time I make a point. You're probably going to hit max odds after you hit if you start hitting five, six, seven, eight points because a lot of casinos they they want to limit you from getting that better value off your bet, so they don't want you to get that fair bet. They want to say, hey, well, we'll only let you take twenty dollars on that bet instead of take five thousand. Because guess what? If you're taking five thousand instead of just twenty. Now you're getting a really good bet and a fair bet, and that's not in their advantage, not in their favor. They don't want that. They don't want you to negate and not have house advantage piling down, pressing down against you, taking your money. They need as much house advantage. And guess what? And if, if you, they if you if they get players that don't know anything about house advantage, that's what they need. That's what they want. Because that's how they make money is by you letting them short your payout. Don't let them short your payout. You're giving them money every time. So, of course, with this strategy, if you start with this strategy, you can branch off creating your own strategies. But make sure you revolve your main part, 50% of your main formula off this right here. And then from there, you know, every time you win, let's say that you hit a 6 or 8 that you want to bet a a uh, hard six and hard eight for a dollar. Whatever. That's fine when you start branching off small. You know, you need to think small. Notice how if I'm betting twelve dollars on my six and eight and now I'm all of a sudden just scattering one dollar here, one dollar there, that isn't gonna matter so much because it's just one dollar. So I'm betting just an extra maybe like so let's say somebody wanna wanted to customize this strategy. Every time I hit a six or eight press one unit but at the same time, throw out $2 to put on the hard way. So you can choose if you want to do 6, 8, 4, 10. So if I hit a, let's say I hit a 6, I'm pressing one unit, and then I'm also going to bet a dollar hard 6, dollar hard 8. I have an $18 6 now, a $12 8, which is how much? 6, 12, 18, 24, 32. I have a $32 bet between 6 and 8. And then I also have this bet here, which is... $13, right? So I have a $37 bet. What is it going to matter if I just go bet $1, $1? That's a big difference where we're only adding in that bet $1, bet $1, as opposed to, oh, I'm betting 5 in the field, I'm betting 10 in the field, I'm betting 25. See, you got to be very careful with, you know, think of like grains of sand, like salt, like little tiny drops. You, you know, you're not, you're not trying to go throw that shit all over the place. You, 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 you're pressing it in there really, really selective and carefully. And it's, it's like basically going through a, a filter, a strainer. Okay. So if you want to go adding on, your own strategies to that, that's fine, but you you think small. Think small. Adding on, you know, $2 off your win on some other random bets. No big deal, because you're a gambler, you're in it to have fun. Now, let's just stick to the optimal strategy here. Maybe later at the end of it, I'll just show you a, a, a completely customized part of the strategy which would be fine to go use in the casinos for someone who wants to have a little bit more fun by throwing in a few more bets here and there so I'll show you how to go dump in that playing the field bet dump in playing that playing a dollar twelve playing a dollar any crabs playing a dollar two dollar high low playing a you know maybe a five dollar yo once in a blue moon like maybe Maybe that's part of your strategy is if I get up to a $48, 6 or 8 starting with 12 bucks, then I'll throw out a $1, $5, yo. See, that's what you, that's how you got to think is think micro, think small. Okay, as soon as uh, something big happens, I'm going to do something small. That's what you need to think and tell your strategy is, okay, when something big happens, now I'll do something small. When something big happens again, I'll do something small again. And the same thing, if there's something big keeps happening, just keep doing something small. That's optimal strategy. Seven out. You can't win at all. You can't win at all. But we're just going to keep simulating. See, see, We're going to see where this goes. So we're going to bet eight odds. We're going to do the same thing. 
6 and 8 for 12 each. Because we're trying to have fun, you know, we're trying to have some fun. So we just won on a 6 or 8. We press one unit. 7 out. Unfortunately, let's continue. Don't get so down on yourself if you lose. That's part of gambling. You should be playing with money that you're ready to scrap, that you're ready to lose, that you're not, you don't care if you lose. So make sure it's all money that you're ready to toss in the fire because you're going to have so much more fun, you know, tossing that money out there, knowing that you're getting good value because now you can do it safely. Get rid of all that money that you know, oh, I'm playing safe, I'm playing smart. Now it's safe to toss that money out there because it's going to come back. Boom. It's coming back. It's coming back. Ten. I'm going to bet five on ten. Oh, actually, it's our second point. So we're going to bet. We're trying to win. Because if you do uh, $18 eight, you're, you're going to win $21. So you're saying... On my second hit, I'm, I'm looking to win around $21. So let's bet 10 because that's going to pay 20 real close to 21 Because remember, this is our second point. We already made the first point. When you win, you press one unit. So if I were to win this 10 and then I got another 4 or 10, I would be betting 15 because I'm going to press one unit. Because you're trying to use money that you're winning to put into the game because you all you already won so like I said we already won you're losing money you already won so you're you're already feeling good about that because you lost money that you already won so we're gonna play one times odds and right now we're just shooting for six and eight very simple why because we're getting a great value on this great opportunity to take a coin flip and get nearly one to one on our money didn't work it doesn't always work it's just it's just way, the way gambling is so like I say don't be don't get depressed uh, oh I forgot to bet six and eight good thing it didn't hit I would have hated if it would have hit there um, so now we're gonna take two up times odds because this is our second point Remember, when some when it hits, you press one unit. Boom. We just won. Our money's coming back. It's still there. It's still there. So I think I had ten time ten odds on that. I can't remember. No, I had one. So now we're gonna go to ten. Because we're pressing one unit. This is our second point. Seven out. Not a big deal, because imagine when we get one hot roll, we make six points. You know how much money I'm going to make when I hit that six-point roll with the bet that I'm doing here? I'll be up 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks. It'll it'll just be insane how much profit all I make on one hot roll. And that's what you're looking for is those hot rolls. That's what you're relying on. You're looking to find that hot roll. Only way you're going to find a hot roll is if you keep rolling more and more. So a $12 bet pays 18. 14 pays 21. That's perfect. That's because we're pressing one unit. Let's go for it. Let's see what happens. Bam! Press one unit. We just won. Remember, if you lose, don't matter, because all that money, you're ready to scrap it all. Boom, that's our second point. So the next point will be three. We're going to play three units, which will be a, like a $24 six or eight. So we're, we're going to be betting odds in the amount of trying to win $28, because a $24 six or eight pays 28 So you're looking to try to receive that payout of $28 on that ratio. So what's our point six? Um, so what we do is we're gonna go this is our third point we're gonna do 20 times odds or I believe we're actually gonna do 15 because that's three units right now so our eights at 12 remember eight has not hit and if it does not hit don't press it 
So we're at three units because we're on our third point. So this nearly gets to a $28 payout or because you're going to get uh, 18 plus 5. So it's close. And that's what we're looking for right here. We're just rolling for 6 or 8. 7 out. But look, we, we, we were at 9,900, but now we're at 9,040. So we're almost up everything we, we, we were down. So it's all coming back. It's just, it's all going through a cycle, uh, a vacuum. So 5 odds, $12, 6 and 8. Press 1 unit. That's all we do. That is all you need to do. You're getting great value, and you're not risking so much money on something that isn't worth it. This is at least great value for people who are willing to, you know, pay a little bit of a price. It does have house advantage going against you, but at least you're getting a nice coin flip on this stuff. Let's see if we can get this six or eight, six and eight pressed up to something like maybe 30, 36 would be cool. Because it's only a matter of time before we get a $30 six or eight, you know. Like I say, don't count your money. Make sure you're playing with money that you can go throw into a fire. That way you can have some fun, you know what I'm saying? Have some fun. But remember, now you know that you're playing optimal strategy where you're getting that, oh, I'm getting that one-to-one -one coin flip ratio value on my, my, my betting. I'm actually get, I'm getting a really good chance to, to, to come out a winner half the time. Um, I'm going to show you, you know, you can be a winner half the time if you use your brain and do some research and play smart, you know. Don't just keep giving money away, not knowing where it's going. Know where your money's at. Know where it's going. Where's your money going? It's a vacuum. Ooh, seven. We were running good, too. We were, oh, my God, a dollar pass. We lost bare minimum there. Not bad. We got a little bit lucky on that. So let's take into consideration an average buy-in for this type of bet. I would recommend 12, 12, 24, 24 times, about a $240 to $500 buy-in. You should, so a $500 buy-in, you have a good chance of doubling up making 500 bucks without having such a, a large risk of losing that full 500 bucks because you, you know you may lose 300 bucks 400 bucks before you decide to call it a night and you're not care maybe you're one of those people who are ready to you know lose the whole 500 so you know you have a good chance to win 500 bucks you have a good chance uh, to prevent even losing the full 500 so this is a great bet with, like I say, this is a bet that will require around a typical $240 to $500 buy-in. And you're going to go back and forth. You're going to lose $200. You're going to win $200. You're going to lose $200. You're going to win $200. It's going to be a roller coaster. That's what we love to gamble for. We love that. This is our second point, so we're playing two units of odds. I knew that six was going to hit. I was just going to call it. I was going to say six is just about to hit. I mean, I wasn't going to press any other spontaneous bets or anything. So we're down 150 bucks, kind of close to. Not, not a big deal, because remember... One roll, we're going to make 100 bucks, 200 bucks. And that's going to cover all that loss. Imagine when I get up to $30, sixes and eights. How much money that's going to bring in profitably to the bankroll. So we're going on our second point. We have an $18 eight. Second point. Okay. Um, in this situation, 
since you're playing the point at two, you, you want to keep the six and eight equal to what it was. So since I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure we hit the 6, so it should be an 18. You need to keep track of if your place bet 6 or 8 is where it's at because you don't want to just switch your 8 over to the 6 just because. So let's say that your 8 was pressed up to 36 and your 6 was only at like 12. You know, you don't want to just switch that over. You want to keep that 6 at 6 because you're relying on, okay, I'm only pressing my 6 if it hits. So if it didn't hit, you don't want to go pressing it. I mean, you could, it wouldn't be a bad strategy, but you want to stick to your formula. You want to stick to your strategy. So let's just say, remember, our place bet 6 and 8 are both at 3 units. Because we've hit them both. Okay, so now we're going to the next unit. We press 1 unit. So our six, place bet 6 is at 4 units. Our place bet 8 is at 3 units. Boom. Now we're going to our third point, so that means we're going to try to win $21, this bet, that the odds would pay me 20 and it clearly go over uh, 21 because it's our third point, it would be like we're trying to play three units. Um, we know that our 8 is at 18. This is where we're going to make our money off just one roll. Seven, eight. Okay, so we have an $18 place eight and a $24 place six. Okay, now we're on our fourth point. So we play. 20 odds, and this is at 24. 5, 10, 15, 20. Bam. That's all. That's all you can do. You can, all you can do is pray to God that it wins. So we're having quite the battle here. This is amazing. It's amazing how this money flows when you play it and you're keeping track of your losses because it's just under so much more control and it's just such it's way more solid so we're on our first point we just hit a six we're at an eighteen dollar six we're at an eighteen dollar eight We're at a $24 rate. Okay, that 6 and 8 is going now. This is the first point still. 7 out. Not a bad roll. We broke even. But we had so many chances to make some serious money. And that's what you're relying on. Is getting into those chances where you have all those chances to make some money, get onto a long roll. You're trying to get into a long roll. You're relying on hitting a long roll of hitting a, a winner, 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 winner. You That's all you can do to make money. Uh, we're going to do 12. And we're going to do a 12. Was it? Yeah, it's still 12 right now. Okay. Was it? No, we had an 8. But that was a point, though. We're just going to stick at 12. That seems to be pretty fair. One unit. 8, one unit. 7 out. Not a bad run. Like I said, we like basically broke even there. Press one unit. And remember, this is a strategy where you're trying to go for the gold. You're like, you're trying to win everything in the in the casino with this strategy. So you're you're betting that you're gonna hit one of the most 
fire rolls in the fucking world with this bet. You're like trying to destroy the, the casino with this bet. You're like literally coming at them with a nuclear arsenal with this style of betting. You're like literally holy fielding Mike Tysoning strategy with this sort of approach. Okay, we're going to our second point. We have a $36.8. eight. We're up to 12. We're almost back to breaking even. Bam, we just hit another six. We're more than breaking even because all our money in play, we're way over even. Did you anybody notice that we're, we're like just a second ago we were at 1990, but look how much money we have now. 9,070. 9,970 plus we have $77 in bets. So if we took all our bets down, if we discluding the five, we're already up $47. Why do you think we're up $47 after we took so many losses? Is because our bet is getting such good value at the one-to-one -one ratio that it's hard to lose. It's hard to lose. Why do you think I'm I, I'm encouraging, you know, go for it, you know, burn that loss and take those losses with these strong, solid, powerful bets because it's getting great value. $36.8, $24.6. Oh, and we just hit the point. That's the third point. That's the second point, but we're going on to the third. Nine, we're back on it. Okay, let's do 24 to win 28. We're trying to win 28. Let's do 16 odds. That'll pay 24. Let's do 18. Okay. That, that's a little better. Notice how I barely just sprinkle $1, and I'm all cautious about putting $1 into play, while some people are putting $40 in the field, throwing it in there like it's a fucking goddamn uh, carnival game and shit. I am very careful about, like, what am I going to put into play, what am I not? you got to be very selective and super careful on like, like I say, when I'm making these choices, I'm just, oh, one dollar, one dollar. You need to be very critical. Oh, I'm going to put that one dollar in there because, dude, this is serious. This is money. Like, who wants to go losing all their money? That What happens to people who don't have money? They live underneath a bridge. Why would you want to practice a habit that people that don't have money, you know, they go under, under bridges. They lose, okay, it's a matter of getting good practice. See, I'm just so used to being like very selective and being a master of my betting that I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to be very careful with even just one dollar going into there. So you need to be so protective of even just that one dollar. One dollar. And let me tell you guys, make sure if, if you're on a run like this and your bets are fucking, you're up a hundred bucks, you know what? Throw your dealer on that six and eight for a dollar a dollar each or even 50 cents each or 25 cents each and do it every time you know don't just do it uh you know two times when you're playing with the dealers for six hours you know you need to be tipping them that two dollars on that six eight you know five times every few hours or every hour because it's only going to be two bucks i mean and like I say, they're going to make some serious money as long as they stay up on it. So remember, if you do it and there's eight other players at the table and they start doing it, you're not the only one who has to keep them up on that 6-8. And then you know what? Maybe put them on the 5 or 9, 4 or 10. Remember, dealers are getting good, better value on these place bets at $1 because it's getting true odds. So they're not getting a house advantage on those 5s and 9s fours and tens. So it's beneficial to keep, oh, they're getting one-to-one -one value on these bets. Let's get them in the game for just one buck, two bucks, three. And it, like I guess I, maybe you're one of those people who like to tip, you know, throw them that five bucks, throw it across for the dealers, throw them that 10 bucks, better across for the dealers. You know, some people have more money than others. It's not about um, you know, spoiling them, you know, it, you can make them some good money just betting that one dollar, 
every so often. You know, it's just a matter of, you know, make sure your dealer doesn't get bored. Make sure your dealers aren't falling asleep. You know, make how, think about how much fun you're having and how fast time flies when you're having being put in the game. So even just 25 cent bets, six and eight, they're going to wake up and they're going to think, oh man, I, can, I have a real chance to make some money and win. I'm going to pay attention to this guy. I'm going to help him win. I want him to win. I want to I want to make sure this guy gets promotion chips um and gets ringed into the promotion system. I want to make sure this guy gets uh you know letters in his mail to get promoted because that's what happens if you tip the dealers. They're going to put in good word. They're going to amp up your points. They're going to amp up your your play betting because they're going to rank you as more of a uh, valued customer because they need dealers. They need dealers. So guess what? If you're tipping their dealers, you're going to basically solve a problem that they need resolved. They always need more dealers. They always need more good dealers. So when you're providing that service to where you can allow them to get good dealers and attract good dealers and keep those dealers they're going to say, hey, you know what, that's the type of person I want playing in my casino. Look, we're going to give that guy more comps because it's up to them. They're the ones who choose. Oh, well, I want to comp this guy that, this guy that. And guess what? If you're one of those players who aren't helping people out, not being a nice person, they're not going to rule in your favor. Let's comp this guy more. Let's give this guy a free room. A lot of times that's what it comes down to when you're in these casinos is they're looking at, well, is this guy worth our money? Is he worth our time? Is he straggling around? Is he being smart? Is he even any fun? Well, guess what? If you're one of those players who are just losing your $100 in one hour, not tipping the dealers, and no one even remembers who you are, that's the biggest thing. People need to remember who you are. Do you think anyone's going to remember who you are if you go in there losing a hundred dollars in one hour and you don't tip? They're not going to remember you. They, if you need to make sure people are remembering who you are, because that gives you a name for yourself. That gives you more value, and you can get more value. Let's say even just putting a dealer on a 50 cent six or eight or one dollar six or eight. Let's say 10 times out of a four hour night, right? Maybe you betting that two dollars on six or eight for them 10 times. That's 20 bucks. You invested 20 bucks. And now all of a sudden you're doing it in a way that it looks like you're doing it a lot. So now when they look at you, they remember that. Oh, you're making a name for yourself. And now... When you when you ask that that boss, hey, can I get comped a room? Which what does it cost? Normally a hundred bucks, a hundred and fifty bucks. They're gonna remember, well, let me think, what can I do for this person? Oh, this is that person that tips my dealers and helps the casino become more valuable. Oh, you know what? You're the type of player we want around here. You're valuable to us. You're worth our time, you're worth our money, because you're helping everybody out and Guess what? Since you're going to help out, we're going to help out. And boom, you just spent 20 bucks, but now all of a sudden it comes they remember that you're a help, you're a good guy. They want to help you out cuz you help out. Okay, you know what? You're one of those players you play a lot, you bet a lot, you tip the dealers. Let's just let's comp this guy a $150 room for free. You just invested that 20 bucks and it went how much further because now it, it rings in their head they remember oh yeah that's the type of guy that I can fight for to say hey let's give him more promotion let's give him more credit let's help this guy because that's what you're relying on is they have to come back and it's got to come back into a uh, uh, basically a uh, an appraisal and they're going to be like, all right, this person's valuable. And how do you do that? Barely, you barely have to do very much. Doesn't take very much. Let's continue. Ten or four, so now we're on our fourth point. So you're going to go 15 to win 30. 
30 is pretty good. Let's go with that. Let's see what happens. Seven out. I was I was just gonna say. I wouldn't be surprised. I, and at that point, if you wanted to take it all down and start over, that's fine. Um, that just revolves around changing the strategy, incorporating your own new strategy to it. That's fine. That would have been fine, and that would have been that would have worked that time. But a lot, you know, the times that it didn't work, what if that eight would have hit? You'd have been up another forty-two bucks. So there are pros and cons to coming down. It's not my style. I don't roll like that. Because I'm already up $17. I started with $10,000. I'm already up $17. Why would I care? Actually, I'm up $22 because I have a $5 pass line too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you're basically trying to get every chance you can to win uh, more and more and more because that's the way gambling works is when it starts to win it starts to rain and rain and rain and you rely on those moments and those rare because that's how you you can afford that because you're using a system that is designed to get you into those situations to where you're hitting those events where oh it's another win it's another win it's another win and remember if you're not there when that happens and you don't strike as hard as you possibly can, you're going to miss out. And it happens, and it's going to happen, and it's going to strike like lightning. The time that you're not paying attention, the time that you don't think anything's going to happen, all of a sudden you're going to hit this monster eight-point roll for going on for one hour. And what would have happened had you been pressing, 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 pressing? You'd have been up so much money, and that's what you are relying on. Guess what? When you go play video poker, you're relying on hitting that jackpot. You want to hit that one royal flush, that one $2,000 streak, that one $2,000 payout to where you get so much money back that it's like just little tiny grains of sand compared to what you just started off with. So it's like you're starting off with 500 bucks, but you're looking to build that 500 up to like 1500 2000 2500 because guess what? If you were in the world's hottest role in the world and you were using this strategy, what do you think would have happened? Your six and eight would have been up to like what one thousand or no, not a thousand. It wouldn't have been up that high. It would have been easily up to like a hundred to two hundred dollars. But how many times would you have hit that hundred dollar, two hundred dollar, six and eight over and over and over and over and over? So you're going to be looking at twenty thousand fifty thousand dollar profit on some rare type of shit that happens like that and that's what you're trying to do you're trying to say hey i want to be that guy who's sitting here when these dice go on blazing fire and then i just literally drain their bankroll for everything they got because i'm sitting there with this huge gigantic bet out there Because you got to gamble on something. You might as well gamble on the most useful area and prospect of the boundary that you can get. Boom, that's our first point. I was going to call a seven, but I didn't want to be a negative person. I can kind of feel it. But it's it doesn't matter, so it it it's just stupid to not go for the glory. That's our first point. I just go for the glory. Cause like I say, if I can catch it on camera, like what if I get on some sort of roll where I get both the six and eight up to like forty eight? You know how much profit I'll have? It'll be fucking through the roof. Um, anyway, we're going to press that one unit. That just hit. That six is looking good. We're at 24. Boom, we just made our second point. So we're at a $12 eight, just so everybody knows. $12 eight still. $24 six. And this is the second point. Seven out. Not bad. We're still up. We're still up. We're doing real good. 
And you can see how this strategy is the strategy you, you want to be using when you're playing craps. Because you have a real chance of coming out on that coin flip. Boom, that's our first point. Second point. Seven out. Notice how we're like breaking even. We're like, because I'm getting like completely 50-50 nearly on this bet. And that's the beauty of being able to know like how good of a bet am I getting, how bad of a bet am I getting. So I'm on a $12 six or eight. This is our second point. Six and eight all day. Bam! Third point. Six and eight all day. Oh shit, we're breaking even. And you can see how this is, you know, this is fun. Because I'm not losing money as badly as someone with such a higher house edge would be. And I have a real chance of winning some damn money. Which is the whole point of what makes gambling fun. Bam. Bam. Scared money makes no money. I ain't scared. Why the fuck would you be scared? Who gives a fuck? I'm up $50. You can take all that because I'm up $50. That's the attitude you need to have in your mind. Take all that because I'm already up so goddamn much. I'm ready to bet more. Because you're not afraid. You're not afraid. Who gives a fuck? You're not afraid. You're not afraid to fuck the house over. You ain't no joke. You're ready to fuck that house. You're ready to fuck that house. I'm still up $39. I don't give a fuck. I'm still up $30, $29. I don't give a fuck. You're about to fuck the casino. Oh my god, I just missed my six and eight. I messed up. God, that's horrible. God, that sucks. I mean, I hate when that happens. I'm going to fuck this casino out the water. It's going to go under like the Titanic. This casino is going to go so goddamn broke. They're going to fucking shut the goddamn table down. They're going to put the house edge up higher. We are we are blazing. We are absolutely blazing. We are absolutely on fire. We are absolutely that's one point. Here's our second point. Guys, we aren't afraid to lose. Remember, we are not afraid to lose. Because they're not shorting my payout as much as they want so I can lose and lose and lose over and over because they aren't touching my money they are not near my money they're so far away from my money I want to lose I want to lose
I want to lose. I want to lose again. I want to lose again. I want to lose again and again and again. That's what you tell the casino. Because that's what they say. They want to lose again. They want to lose again. And they want to lose again. And they want to lose again. So do I. I'm going to use their strategy against them. I'm, I want to lose again. Hey, I, I want to lose again. I want to lose again. I want to lose again. I have a $24 six. This is the second point. Just remember. So I, it's the second point, so I only play two. And I have a $12. $24 $6. So if I make this point, I'm going to put the $24 $6 back on there. And I'm, I'm ready to lose more. I, I'm ready to lose more. I want 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 to lose again. I want to lose again and again and again. I want to lose. You tell those dice. You tell those dice. I want to lose. I'm ready to lose. You tell them I'm ready to lose. I am ready to lose. That's our first point. We have an $18, 6 and 8. First point. Now we're going on our second point. I want to lose. I'm ready to lose. I am ready to lose. I am ready to lose. I am I am ready to lose. I am ready to lose. I am waiting to lose. I am, you tell them, I'm waiting to lose. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I am waiting. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. I am waiting to lose. I am waiting. Bam, that's our first point. We have a $12.6, $18.8. Second point going up. $12.6. I am ready to lose. I am ready. You, you tell them every time, I am ready. I am ready to lose again. I am ready to lose again. Why Why am I ready to lose again? Because I know that I'm getting closer to winning again. When I lose again, I'm getting closer to winning again. Watch this. You people aren't going to believe how powerful my house advantage against the casino is being able to break goddamn even and double up. I can break even bare minimum. It's a bonus when I go double up. This strategy, you're going to nearly break even every goddamn time. But you have that really good chance to actually win. So, if you get far behind, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Who cares? You get down 500 bucks, stick to your same strategy, keep doing it. Just play another day. Get some more money. Remember, you should be playing with money that you, you're, 
you're ready to go completely wild and crazy with. You need to go as crazy. This is our second point. You got to wild out. But you got to know what you're going to do and why you're going to do it. So we're starting over. Twelve dollars, six and eight. We're down a hundred and fifty bucks, no big deal. Watch what happens when you get on a really good roll. You're gonna win all that money back in like ten minutes. Okay, that's the first point. Oops. We are just getting started. We are just getting started. $30 six going up. Six is going up. Now we're making some serious money on that six. Oh, that was a hell of a roll. And with this strategy, at least you can have some real fun. This is this is about as much fun as you can have playing without like blowing your money, wasting it, you know. First point. Seven out. Seven. Just so everybody knows, like, this was not pre recorded. I didn't, like, I'm not trying to set up some sort of session that just automatically wins me a thousand dollars and only show the one that <laughs> wins me at that. I'm just recording this one time. If it wins, it wins. If it loses, it loses. It doesn't matter. So, we're just, uh, we're witnessing computer gambling at its finest. $18 rate, second point. $18 rate. Hey, that's our third, second point. And we have an $18 rate. Third point. Oh my god, that's our third point. Oh my god. Eighteen dollar eight, third point, fourth point now. So we're gonna go with fifteen. Ah, oh, that was a hell of a roll. Five. That's our first point. Winner. Twelve dollars, six and eight. Second point. Oh, that's the second point. That is. We're on our third point. Seven 
Not bad, not bad. You could throw six odds on there. Eighteen dollars, six and eight. Bam, that's the first point. So eighteen each. Second point. Bam, made that point right away. We had 18 on each. Third point. Bam. This is turning into an epic roll. Oh, man. That was a hell of a roll. Eight right off the bat. Eight. Six right off the bat. Eight off the bat again. Eight off the bat. Man, we're already at $30. Seven out. That was a fucking sick run, though. See, if I can get a run like that every time, I'll be making like 20 to 40 bucks every roll. So, those are the type of rolls that are good. Even though we lost. Even though we lost. Seven out. $12, 6 and 8. We press it one unit every time. Crash and burn. Crash and burn. First point. Six, $18, 6 It happens. It happens. Oh. Tough roll. Tough roll. We're doing fine. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Okay, first point. Got it, first point. Seven out. Tough, tough. First point. Second point here. Part four, second point. Third 
third point. Seven out, not bad. Not bad. Let's see if we can get that money back here. First point. Seven out. Jeez, that's a lot of sevens. This is going to be an epic roll coming up soon. We're going to hit an epic roll. God damn. Got it. So at least everybody can see, you know, this isn't scripted. Because I said at the beginning of the video, you know, whether it wins or loses this this session, it really doesn't matter. So, oh, fuck, is that a, I have an extra dollar on that. Oops. I don't remember if it's the second point. I think it might be. Dude, did I forget to press that last one? I think I did. I'm totally like off on this roll as far as not knowing where I'm at you know, on the system. I lost track. Seven out. Four. I have a feeling we're probably going to hit some sort of wild roll, just considering that mathematics works in fun in a you know strange ways. So you do see pretty wild up up swings and down swings. So oh god, I'm not even on the fucking point. Shit. We're not gonna, we're gonna have to do the, no, 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 oh, fuck it. So we have an $18 or six. $24.06, hit the five. Okay,
hey, we finally made the point. We're not going to take odds on 5, because we already got odds on 9. Oh, fuck. 30 and 30. Now we can take odds on this. It's just the 20. Hey, we made a five. This is getting into, this is turning into an epic roll. We're, we can only play max odds at this point. Oh shit, that was a good roll except for missing the goddamn initial come out roll. I didn't mean to fucking miss the come out. First point. Okay, first point, second point, got it, going to the third, point three. Yeah, so this system is the ultimate crap strategy. You could even just stick with the combat and then take an odds instead of playing six eight, but I I would much rather prefer just sticking to the six eight to make it a little bit more fun. Okay, so Right now, I'm basically just trying to get it lined up on a hot roll so then everybody can see what a really good roll looks like. Okay, that's the second point. Oh, goddamn 12, I swear to God. That's the fourth point. Um, 
Peck got it. Nice. Goddamn 12. Max odds. I think I had 18 here. No, 24, right? Oh my god, we got it. We're on a hot roll. This is an epic ass roll. Oh my god, this is getting good. We're back in the fucking game again. We're playing max odds. Let's do 18. Bam. 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 We're breaking even. More than breaking even. Look. Because we have 9,959 plus 80. If I come down now, I'm still up $39 now. See, that's why this strategy, you just want to keep, you know, keep your courage up. Stay strong. Stay faithful. Go full out kamikaze. Um, if you win, you win. But if you lose, just, just do it again. Just do it again. Bam. 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 I know it's going to hit. Oh, God. I was thinking it was a six or eight. See, that was a hell of a roll. We're like breaking completely even. And we would have been it up like 40 bucks if we decided like you wanted to chicken out and run. Why the hell would you chicken out and run? When you already know how powerful you are. You, you are more powerful than the casino. Bam. 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 Oh, shit. You are more powerful than the casino. Bam. 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 First point. Uh, first point, bam, bam, first point, second point, bam, not bad, not bad, we're, we're floating. We're floating. Remember, we could have walked ahead a winner. And we were just down like 250, 300 bucks, and we could have walked away 40 bucks. And, and you guys are wondering why this strategy is so powerful. You guys are wondering why it doesn't matter when you lose, when you're using a proper formula and system. This is going to take Vegas down right here. This strategy right here. Vegas can't withstand this amount of power. Not if everybody does that. If everybody does this, psh, Casino, Vegas will be getting taken down. It'll be down so fast. 
they're going to have to create new games. So we have an $18.06 second point. The comeback is real. The comeback is real. See, that's where you make that money is those points. When you start making a bunch of points. And then you start hitting a bunch of sixes and eights. Because after you make like three or four points, you're already taking max odds. And then you're really starting to make a bunch of money. Eights all day, eights all day, eights all day, eight, eight ball corner pocket, oh that was a fucking nice run. Eights all day. Eights all day. First point. Okay, second point. Oh god, I didn't mean... I meant to bet 10. Why didn't I have 10 there? Oh well, uh, going on the third. Third point. Got it. Fourth point, max odds. Five. I'm going to keep it at five because I want to get that 50 cent piece out of there. Actually, I could just do nine. Hopefully it hits though. I need it to hit. Five, yes. We got rid of that 50 cent piece. Okay, first point, second point, seven out. We're still doing good though. We're only down a hundred bucks and we have been betting like a fucking maniac. Making all those pass lines back again. Holy shit. That was epic. We just won like $25 on the come out. That was like as epic as epic gets. 
It was like literally seven, 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 seven. This is the second point. Got it. This could be a monster roll right here. Seven, no. Not bad, though. Not bad. Nice. First point. First point, first point. Oh my god. We got this. We got this. Oh shit. I forgot to put eight odds. Oh well. Saved money that time. We're not really interested in saving money. When we're already saving as much money as we can, that's why. We are, but we're not by placing smaller bets than, than we really need to. Running through the sevens. All we need is one hot roll. You saw that last hot roll. It just literally almost boiled over. Dang. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. Not a big deal. We were just down 250 and then we were up 300. So, first point. It's all part of the game. It's all part of the game. Trying to get a forty-eight dollar six or eight. That would be insane. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, we're about to hit a hot roll. It's gonna roll. It's gonna roll. Oh fuck. It's all, it's okay. It's okay. We're right on track. We're still on track. Okay, this is it. Oh my, that was almost it. 
we almost hit an epic roll. This could be it. We, we're already hitting eights and sixes again. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. So, as you can see, I might have to call this a night here soon. I'm going to keep trying a few more, see if we, we can get a nice hot run. Oh, my God, how fucking dumb is this? A fucking dollar? Um, the, mo the most important part about all this is just so everybody learns the strategy, you know. Of course, with any sort of uh, strategy that incorporates pressing, you're going to experience insane ups and downs. Um, but that's the beauty of this, is we're, we're looking to hit the most insane upswing we can get a hold of. Second point, seven out. Um, all we need is one roll, so. We're down 500 bucks almost. But, how quickly can we make 500 bucks? Let's see. Seven. Seven. First point, seven out. Um, and that's just sometimes the way the game goes. Um, all you can do is just go play another night. Um, you know, pack it up, play another night. So what I'll probably end up doing is I'll just make another video and then just show more sessions of this strategy being incorporated and it, and show everybody the potential Well, it sucks we couldn't capture a really cool win. But like I said, you know, half the time you're going to win that 500 bucks, half the time you're going to lose 500 bucks. So, 
I guess this time wasn't our time to win 500 bucks. It was a minus 500. Um, oh God, I meant to have odds. Oh, well. Um, it's the beauty of gambling. Half the time you're going to win, have a winning session. Half the time it's going to lose. Uh, that's why you got to make sure you're playing with money that you can lose. Because you can't expect for it to always win, you know. So we're at a $42.6. First time we got it that high. Ooh, uh, $48.60. That's what I'm talking about. $48.6 and then 7 out. Not bad, though, because we got a lot of our money back just right there. Oh, shit. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Forgot to put these dollar pieces on. Like I say, plus 500, minus 500, very normal with this strategy. Very normal. I think we're going to be hitting a plus 500 session or roll here. So we're going to try to ride it out a, couple, a little bit longer. See if we we can make it to that huge payout. Because I, I have a feeling we're about to hit some sort of wild payout. The way these dice have been hitting. We were making a really good, strong comeback there. So that's what I mean by that. First point. Eighteen. Twenty-four. Thirty. Oh, thirty-six. Nice. Oh shit, 42. We made it to 42. Oh, and we're hitting the uh, 6 too. $30, 6 and 8 now. Those 6s and 8s were making some serious money that roll. Holy crap, that was wild. See, those are the rolls you're going to make your money back right there. That's where you're making your money back. You're relying on that. You are relying on that. Holy shit. We're fighting though. We're still fighting. 
You just made back a hundred bucks. We're not going to stop yet. Not till we get 400 more. At least break even. We're going to at least be breaking even. We ain't playing $18. Second point, I'm pretty sure. $18. Second. I think it's the second point. I can't remember. It takes work. It takes a lot of damn work. Dang. We're doing good. We're on an upswing. That's for sure. It's going up. First point. God damn three. I fucking swear to God I can't stand. When I miss. It shouldn't have let me roll without a pass line. How fucking dumb. Why is it letting me roll without a fucking pass line? Jesus Christ. Since when can you roll without a fucking pass line? Can't stand that shit. Fucking missing the fucking come out roll? Fuck. Second point, seven out. Second point. No, first point. First point. Seven out. Got this. I got. I'm telling you, the comeback is real. The comeback is real. Plus five hundred, minus five hundred. So I already showed you. What it looks like to lose 500, I'll show you what it looks like to win 500. Because with this system, you're going to be winning 500, losing 500, just like on coin flipping. Half the time you're going to win 5, half the time you're going to lose 5. Flip a coin, flip a coin. First point, still, oh nice, we're selling away, we're selling away, we're out of here, we're gone, we are fucking America, we found new land, we have found new land in America, oh my gosh, what a roll, we're almost back to breaking even, we're on the road to breaking even, it isn't going to be hard to get back to breaking even. Not when I'm hitting numbers like that. Not when I'm hitting numbers like that. Bam. First point. God damn it. I messed up the odds. Second point. Second point, bam. Third point, third point. Bam.
this is fourth point. I can't remember if I had a 16. I did have 18, I think. I can't really remember. This is the fourth point. We play max. Ah, oh, seven out. Still profitable. Profitable. Not bad. More like, once again, breaking even almost as soon as we get that next winning spree coming in. And then we can run. Once we get that money back up, we'll say, okay, I'll, I'll come play another night. <laughs> All right, nice, nice. 18 each. Going, going, gone, gone, gone. Christopher Columbus has sailed America. So we're at 24 and 18 on the second point. 24, got it. That's the second point going to the third. Third point, god damn it. 24, I'm placing it. We're gonna do this. I can't remember what the eight was at. Okay, we're, we're doing good. We're doing good. These dice are really coming back. First point. God damn it. They gotta get these bet like they need hot keys for betting. I should be able to just push one button and my bet just pops up. Oh great. After all that work work we just did to make all that money back. It's okay. We're gonna hit them. We're gonna hit them. We're going to hit some wild six and eight, I'm sure. One run on these sixes and eights are going to bring back all that money. Damn it. Hitting a down swing. It happens. Damn, seven, seven. Okay, nice. That six and eight is stacking. Six. Six and eight. This is the roll. Six and eight all day. Ah, where'd it go? Come on. We were just getting started. First point, getting a good roll again. Dice are heating up. Dice are heating up. 
Oh, front line, front line, finally. Second point. God damn it. $24.630.8. And second point. Second point. I think it's the second. It might be the third. I can't remember. Hey, that's the front line. That's third. Okay, we're on our four, fourth point now. $30.8. Fourth point. Damn, what did I have on here? 18? I can't remember. 24, right? Because I was like $24, 6 and 8. 7 out. Hey, not a bad roll, though. Not a bad roll. First point. So you can actually really see now how this system works. Um, so you can see, man, as soon if you can get one super hot roll and then leave, you're good to go. You just made a quick 500 bucks. Six is going. Six, eight, eight's getting in the game. First point still. Eight, getting in the game. Getting in the game on eight. Ah, oh, that was a nice run. Dang. And uh, it's a never-ending battle. It's just a never-ending battle. A never-ending battle. Oh, shit. God damn, the 18 needs to be, or the 8 needs to be pressed, first point. Forgot to press it. It's been forever since we had a $12 odds on 9. Okay, second point, going to the third. Third point. Oh, finally getting those at eights. Third point. Ah, oh, not bad, not bad. Not bad. Seven. Dang. So 
see, we're just sitting here floating. Going back and forth. First point. I don't remember if I had 12 on there. Okay, second point. We're on the third. Hey, that's the third point. Fourth point. I think I'm at 18, I can't remember. Hey, that's a front liner. So no matter what the point, we're, we're playing max. Ah, uh, nice. Man, I just want to get one hot roll for the, the video here. Dang it. All that work, all that work. All that work. Okay, first point. Whoa, that see that come out roll is out of control. People don't realize how insanely profitable that front line winner come out roll is. As far as being able to get your, uh, oh God, I did it again. First point. Hey, that's second point. Okay, this could be the breakaway. This could be the breakaway. Don't lose, don't lose. Ah. Uh. We almost had the comeback on point. It was just beginning. First point. First point. First point. We're on our second point now. Oh, six and eight. That's it. 
Oh, this is the roll. Oh, man, we were uh, up 250 from that last loss. Like I said, we were down 500. Now we're up 250. So we're only down to 260 right now. See if we can get on another heater. Maybe these dice are warmed up. Maybe these dice are warmed up, man. Maybe these dice are warmed up. Maybe these dice are warmed up. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe these dice are warmed up. Maybe, first point. Second point. Maybe they're warm. Maybe they're warm. Maybe they're warm. Maybe they're warm. Maybe. 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 We're already breaking even again. Because we got 9,900 and we got 100 in play. We're, we're breaking even. We could take all our money and say, hey, I went from minus 500 to up 500, breaking even. That's what I wanted to show everybody. And if we lose, we lose. It's it's okay. Third point. Come on. Oh, wait, wait. No, I don't give a shit. I bet an extra dollar. We'll just do 20. Hey, we got paid. We are up. We're in. We're finally over breaking even. And that's what I wanted to show everybody is how it goes from plus 500, minus 500, plus 500. So, I mean, you could see times it goes minus 1,000, plus 1,000, minus 5. You never know. It could go plus 2,000. It could go minus 2,000. It could go plus 500, minus 500. Because it goes in units of plus 500, minus 500. So it could go plus 500 two times in a row, three times in a row, four times in a row, five times in a row. It could go minus 500, one time in a row, two time in a row, three time in a row. It's just, it's, it's the most amazing strategy. Okay, so we're at $48 and 24 on six. With max odds, 48. Bam, six, baby. Oh, that is game. Look at that. And you guys were doubting my strategy. You guys thought that it wasn't going to work. You guys thought uh, we have a $48 rate in the bank. Oh, my God, it's in the fucking bank. And we had a $24 six, I think. I can't even remember. We're going out with the bang. And that's it. That's the strategy, guys. You just seen it. Minus 500, plus 500. Um, all you can really hope for is to get on a plus 500 and get out of there. Or get on a plus 1,000. Get out of there, you know, celebrate, go buy some dinner, do it another night, have some fun. Don't forget to tip your dealers, guys. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that.